Hi there, I'm Luke, welcome back to Photo Byte, and today we're checking out the Honor V20. Let's get into it. So on the inside, we're looking at a Kirin 980 AI chipset with dual MPU, nine liquid cooling technology, triple antenna Wi-Fi, a 4,000 milliamp battery, which can also be supercharged and you can get 55% battery in 30 minutes. So depending on which phone you get, you can get it with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of memory, or you can get the six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of memory. So currently we have the 128 gigabytes of memory, so we've got six gigs of RAM. And what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna go up, we're gonna actually test it in the field, see how it performs. But firstly, we'll get into the cameras. So firstly, on the rear camera, looking at a new and world's first 48 megapixel f1.8 camera. One of the amazing things about this as well is there's a half inch sensor inside it, which is incredible. On the front, actually built into the screen, so if we just turn that on, you may or may not be able to see that, but it's called a hole punch. So there's no more notch, it's a hole punch camera, and that is a 25 megapixel front facing camera. So you've got two very strong candidates in terms of pixels on this camera. And one of the nice features that we're seeing with this on our View 20 is it really pushing the photography on this model. So without further ado, we're gonna go out, do some exploring, test its features, and see what 48 megapixels can offer us. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna put on screen recording so you guys can see what we're doing. So currently we're rolling, now we're gonna go on camera. So with the camera, you'll see that it's very similar to an Honor or a Huawei. And if we just press on the one times, you get two times. Now, this isn't gonna be an optical. This is going to be a digital zoom. But when you have 48 megapixels, even halving that, you're still looking at a 24 megapixel image. So it's more than enough for most photographers out there and it's more, more than enough for us. And then on the top as well, you've got AI. Now what's nice about AI is they've actually done it so it has 60 different categories in those categories, there's a 1,500 scenarios that have already been pre-designed and ready to be used in this camera. So what they've also done is with the new chips that they put in the 980 Kirin, is it makes the AI work twice as fast than its previous model. So when you're going out and you're taking pictures and using the AI, there's not much of a wait for it just to kick in. So it's really snappy. Currently, it's already picked up on plant life. Uh, it isn't really much in terms of um, in, in terms of colors here, it's mostly greenery. But if we just point it out to the sky, giving a moment, cloudy. That took no time at all. They were down to grass, grass. Yeah, there's like, what, two, two second delay there? Nothing much. Then we're just gonna turn that off there. So in terms of features on the bottom, we've got portrait on the left. We've also got night mode. Now, what they've done now, this is AI assisted night mode. So it, what it does, it uses the one of four in one technology. It'll take um, pictures at different levels of light, so different exposures, and then it'll blend them together to give you the perfect, or should I say optimal picture in low light without having that horrible grain you normally see when you take just a generic picture. So if I just go into photo, I'm just gonna take a picture. Cool, I'm gonna go to night mode. So I know it's not night, but it is quite gloomy. So it's doing a three second exposure, and there it is. So we're just gonna go into our preview. So th this is the one with photo, you'll see it in the screen recording, and then that is the one with night mode. So it does add a bit of sharpening, does do a bit of saturation, but overall it's a very well balanced image. And to be honest, if I was using that, I'd be happy with it. One of the nice things about the night mode is it doesn't have to be specifically used during nighttime, you can use it during the day. As long as you're not pointing it towards the sun and more away, you can get some really nice HDR images. Now, if we go over to portrait, they they've done something where you can change the look of the portraits, you can go no lighting, you can go photo booth, you can go stained glass, and if you have a person in front of you, it'll actually pick up on their face and it will change the lighting for you. So it's quite a nice feature to have, especially when you get more creative with your portraiture. That's definitely one to have a play with. Then we can go over to more, so we just skipped over video briefly, but you've got your pro mode. So in there, we've got control like we normally see with Honors and Huawei's. We have full control over the camera, what, and everything that you can do. So we have ISO, shutter speed, um, exposure value, autofocus type, white balance, metering, everything's there to use. You've even, if you go into settings, you can go into your resolution and you can even set 48 megapixels as that is what you want. Plus you got raw, so you can't really complain. Other photo options, it already had me preset at 12 megapixels. So in pro, it's keeping it at 12. 
It's probably most likely to help with the low light situation, so you've got more um, pixels working on getting you better pictures, especially in low light, to reduce noise. You've got nine megapixels, which is a one by one aspect ratio, and then seven megapixels is the actual size of the screen, which is a 19 by two nine ratio. So a bit of an interesting choice there, but it's there if you need it. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put it into 48 megapixels because we wanna see what this can do. And we're gonna take a few pictures and see how it performs. So what I'm gonna do is I won't use pro mode, we'll just use photo and we'll just see what we can achieve there. So I'm gonna start with a texture shot. So we're gonna pick out one of these plants here. So you have to bear in mind this isn't the brightest of days. So this is working with some pretty muted light. So let's see what kind of textures we can get. I'm just gonna focus on the foreground. And we're just gonna take a quick snap. Then we're gonna focus on the background. Now, what, what's one of the nice things you can do is if you hold, you can have your focus point and then move to where you want to expose. So you can expose for highlights. And it just helps give you that little extra pop when you're taking pictures. There's nothing worse than having an overexposed area or having a really, really dark subject. So you can focus on your subject and then what you can do, in fact, if I just use cameraman Jack here, we're just gonna focus on his face and immediately you'll see the screen brightens up. But then if we pull it over to where it was a more highlighted area, it now balances out the exposure, we can take a picture. So if we have a look at it, you see it does come out dark, but you can see what I mean by we've exposed for the highlights. So this is a great time for detail checking. That actually doesn't look, that's really good actually. That's really, really nice. That, um, yeah, that's impressive. I mean, if 48 megapixels gives you that, I'd be happy with it. Uh, let's try this texture here. I know it's not a bit of greenery, but I just want to see how it performs. Also, if you do a little tap, you can also dial down your exposure. It does seem to be affecting the saturation. You see that, it's kind of going with a blue. You drag it down, it kind of... I was doing a warm thing earlier. There you go, see it goes warm. You dial it down and then it goes into a cooler color. It's very odd. I uh, think what we'll do is we'll take that picture there. I'll select that area, take it over to an exposed part, take another picture. So now, again, I'm just gonna do some pixel peeping. That is pretty impressive. You can see a little bit of sharpening going on, but that's to be expected. Most phones do that. The detail is pretty incredible on this. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with that. That's a really, really good picture. Let's try the AI and see what the AI does for us. So we'll use these guys here. So I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna let the AI do its thing. I'm not gonna touch where it's gonna focus. So we're just gonna take a picture like that. AI balances are not as saturated. I thought it'd be a lot more saturated than I um, previously assumed because most of the AI in our previous reviews, it leans more towards the saturated side of things, which can be very annoying. But overall, this is, this is actually very impressive. Uh, it's not overly saturated in terms of the pixels and how clean it is. Exactly like previous pictures, there's no difference in sharpening, which is a nice thing to see. Nice fall off in terms of the bokeh. Let's just go out of that. Because this does have an f1.8 aperture, so you can get some very nice shallow depth of field images. In fact, if we we just do, uh, it's not really working for us, but we can try something here. So if we go, I'm gonna go into more. Now I'm gonna go pro, because I wanna change my focusing system, because I'm gonna go manual focus. This is trickier than I thought. Exposure value. Let's change the focus again. There we go. So that was a bit of hard work there. But don't pay attention to what's in focus, just pay attention to what's out of focus. And what you'll see is you can still make out the detail of the um, plant life behind, but you can see how it's blurted out. And to be honest, it's quite impressive. Given the distance from there to there, it's blurred out quite well. 
and if you were taking a picture of a person, you would still be able to see what's in the background, but it would be blurred out. So it wouldn't look like one shot at one app on one big aperture like f8 or f16, where you can see everything. There is some nice fall off, so it does add a bit more depth to your imagery. So nice to see that it works really well. And the bonus of the fact is that you've got 48 megapixels. So if you want to zoom in, or you want to go for a tighter shot and get a bit more blur in the background, you can. So you really can't argue with it. What we'll do is we'll just kind of venture on a bit further over there. Let's see what it does with a uh, seascape. You'll see we've got a nice seascape behind us. And what I'm just gonna do is gonna turn the camera on again. Just gonna turn on screen recording, start. So one of the features I wanna test out is how the AI picks up detail. So it's got a nice pickup of the clouds. It's exposing for that. So we just took a bit, bit of a delay taking that picture, but that might be because we've got screen recording going on as well. Just gonna take a picture of some stairs here. If you get more greenery in, it switches to greenery straight away. Turn that off. Let's have a look what, what we've got in the settings. We've got grid, we've got that on. That's very helpful, especially if you want to try and learn how to frame up images properly to give you a bit more of a nicer look. Using a grid is actually a very, let me just turn it on so you guys can see. Oh, they, ooh, loads of different options. Spiral, we'll go with the, just a general grid. So it's a rule of thirds, essentially. <coughs> So if you want to get more of the sky involved, you can also use the bottom line, the bottom third, and you can actually get your horizon level. So when you take a picture, you've got two thirds sky, one third foreground. It just gives you a nice balance overall on your image. There we go. That's it there. So as you can see, detail in clouds is very tricky to pick up. It balances this quite well. The reason I was taking pictures of clouds is you can see how well the dynamic range is handled and how well it is controlling the highlights because when you normally take a picture of a sky with a poorly designed camera it'll just completely white it out it will just see white sky and just get rid of it and it just makes it look very overexposed but having the detail still there in the image is a very good sign that it's working to ensure that you can get detail in clouds even in the foreground like it's not completely black there's still detail there so it's a very well balanced image uh, and with, if you're shooting in brighter conditions, I reckon this will still be able to handle it. And given the detail you're seeing in the clouds, there's really no um, reason not to light the camera. So enough of the rear-facing camera, 48 megapixel guy. Now I'm gonna turn things around and see what we get for the front-facing camera. So currently it's put me straight away in portrait mode and it's already locked onto my face, as you can see. HDR is on, so it's gonna try and basically get everything in the background and everything in the foreground all within focus, oh I smiled. Okay, that caught me off guard. Okay, okay, there we go. No, doesn't want to do it? Okay, I thought it was one of those smile ones. Did I do that again? That's what triggered it off. Oh, my hand. Cool. Okay, so it picks up on the hand and uh, when you put your hand up to show where you're taking a picture of it, it'll start taking pictures, that's clever. How big does my hand need to be? Oh, I've got to put it in the corner. Oh well, okay. So yeah, anyway, so we've got portrait. Uh, you can change your lighting on here. So we've got no lighting. This is photo booth. Let's just get a bit more balance on the face there. Then we've got stained glass. Okay. Portrait. Uh, folding blinds is what they're going for there. Pop. So you've got like a cyan, magenta sort of vibe going on. Interesting. And then you've got stage lighting. So if I put my face in the middle, See that? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, it literally completely took the background out. Don't know if you can see that on the. You see that on the camera there? Yeah, that's. Uh, my eyes look very black and very red around it. So, don't know what I think about that, but that's pretty cool. You got night mode even on the. Have you know? Oh, portrait mode only. Okay, so portrait mode. Let's turn HDR. Okay, let's just do one quick test. We're just gonna go out of the portrait weird colors. So this is without HDR. And then this is with HDR. Let's just see the difference there. Not much of a difference. I mean, you've got a bit more control in the background of the HDR. If you actually look in the, if you look up here, 
very white, very overexposed, a bit more balanced. So it controls the exposure a bit better. It is quite a dull day, so it's not like anything's hiding in the shadows or the highlights, but between the two, you can see there is a small difference, but overall pretty good. So let's see what else. Oh, we've also got smoothing. So I set the beauty level to zero, which is pretty okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. What other features of these? Oh, you can add um, weird discs, apparently. So okay, currently we've got HDR on the AI HDR. I'm going to turn on AI. This is AI enabled photography. You just called me a plant a second ago. So we're currently with greenery, so it's pointing out there's greenery in the background. I'm going to take a picture like this. It does make my eyes look a bit. Let's see how that came out. Whoa, that's, uh, that's not bad, actually. Because I'm always careful, because what sometimes happens is it blows out the detail in the eyes and just makes them black. But that's actually caught a bit of detail like you can even see the reflection in my eye of me taking the selfie. That's not bad. Nice greenery, very nice colours. Saturated again. Um, I am a very pale person, so me being that white is pretty typical. At the second camera, which is the 3D camera, we're going to go into more, go on to 3D panorama. And it basically allows you to start recording. I know we don't go too fast, apparently. Okay, we're slowing down, we're slowing down. So we're just going to take in the area that we're in and stop. So now we go into preview. We tap on 3D and you'll start seeing it pinpoint in different areas. So you see how it's worked there. And then we can start view. So we can start viewing it. Press 3D again one more time. So now we can see a bit more. One of the conveniences of the 3D is you can go around that way and you can start working your way up. You can get a full 3D scope of where you are. So rather than just in a regular panoramic view like this, you can keep going around, you can go up, you can then start going down and it'll map out an entire world around you, which is actually pretty clever and it uses the 3D camera to kind of work out the distance of where everything is so it doesn't make the ground appear like it's really far away and it works out the focal length of where everything is so everything looks proportional. So if you do use any VR goggles, you put the um, image up in front of you, have a look around, it'll look like where you're standing rather than everything being at a certain distance away from you. So a very clever piece of kit. Don't have many users will actually <coughs> use that, but it's nice to see them trying something different and offering something different that you won't see with other models. So going into video mode, we won't start doing any video samples, we'll save that for later at the end of the review, but when we go into settings and go into resolution, we are greeted with 4K, so this is a nice feature to see and it's nice to see it being put more into phones. We're looking at 1080p Full HD. Uh, this one is giving a ratio of 19 by 29, so that's basically the resolution of the screen ratio. You're then looking at 1080 at uh, 60 frames per second. That one, by the looks of it, is going to be the 4x3 ratio, more likely. Uh, sorry, no, the 16x9. Uh, then you've got 1080p, 4HD is standard, and you've got 720p. Now, what's interesting about 720p is you've got slow-mo, which can go 960 frames a second. So that's a very, very nice thing to do. It's also great when you just want to get like a nice um, slow motion piece of a subject. I've used it on a flag. It sounds boring, but it's quite cool to see how it moves. Uh, you can do it of street dancers, dancing in the street, or if you had a concert, you can get like a slow-mo of the place just going crazy. That's a great time to use slow-mo. So, it doesn't sound like something you would use, but do give it a go. It's great to be a bit more creative, and using slow-mo is a great way to do that. In one of the video settings as well, there's also AI zoom. So if we select that and go back, it now gives you the option to zoom in and zoom out. So whilst you're filming, so mainly in 1080p, you can zoom in and you can still get nice resolution video, and then you can zoom out, so you can change between the two. So it's gonna cut the screen recording, so you'll just have to cut to the video playing. But if we just end the screen recording for now, go into video, and hit record. So as we're recording, nice and stabilized as well. So I'm just wobbling up, up, up and down. Don't really see much going on there. And then we can go two times. Again, stabilized, very stabilized. Almost as like it's being panned on a tripod. Very, very stable. 
and then go back to one times. So yeah, the video is quite interesting. The fact that if we just re-record cameraman Jack, what's basically coming up is a lock and it's picked up on him. So if I just hit record again, if I hit lock, and then if I start moving around, it remains locked on focus and it zooms onto Jack. So as I'm walking away, it's actually actively zoomed into him. And then when I come closer, rather than him getting really big in the screen, it just balances it all out. That's a very nice feature, especially if you're trying to lock onto a subject that's moving away from you and getting closer to you. I'm just walking backwards and forwards. It's stabilized and it locks onto cameraman Jack very well. Even if I'm moving around him, which can always be quite tricky, it stays locked onto him. We're gonna go back, so now it's gonna start zooming in. So it's almost like a dolly zoom. And if we then go in, very clever. Yeah, I think Jack will like this little feature. Definitely something to use. Yeah, that's cool. Switched off. I can definitely see that feature being used for subjects that are kind of moving away, coming closer to you, especially a dog like we saw earlier. Being able to track that just running around and then it coming closer and further, especially during a game of fetch, you'll stay locked onto the subject. And the lock feature is definitely a nice thing as well. So when it's locked onto the subject, it knows the distance of that subject. As you're moving backwards, it stays locked on and it zooms in. So it tries to keep the subject within the same size of the frame, even when you're close up to when you're uh, zoomed out. Do bear in mind, it only goes by the one times or two times zoom. So if you're trying to get a subject that's like 50 meters away, they're not going to appear like they're right in front of you, but the more works within like a 10 foot radius. So as close as I am right now, which is probably about here. So it's not massive, but any small movement to keep in the same size of frame, very clever and definitely something worth trying when you get hold of this phone. So overall, that's our review of the Honor View 20. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, my name's Luke, this is Photobyte, and we'll see you next time.